I never thought I'd be saying this, uh, but I just played PUBG Mobile using controllers on an Android smartphone, and I got a winner winner chicken dinner. Hey, this is Pocket Now, and I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here is your first hands on with the Black Shark 2. This just might be the gaming phone. Now, aesthetically, this is the equivalent of getting a large, heavy gaming laptop and using it for all of the general notebook purposes. The screen is an AMOLED panel at 6.4 inches. It is meant to really show off media and games, obviously, in vivid fashion, as it is tuned to the DCI-P3 standard. Now, it is a full HD plus screen, which might be a small bummer to those of you spec-hungry folks who want Quad HD in a flagship device. But trust me, that might be the only spec that's kind of missing what is otherwise an incredibly stacked device. And we haven't even gotten to the accessories yet. Given that touchscreens are the inherent method of input for mobile games, Black Shark did ensure that the touch latency in this screen is at an all-time low. Clocking in at 43.5 milliseconds in touch response, the Black Shark 2 is able to achieve better latency than phones like the iPhone or the Galaxy S10. This particular feature was actually demonstrated in incredible fashion on stage by a champion gamer playing an insane level in a Guitar Hero-like game. Pushing all of this is the Snapdragon 855 and the Adreno 640. These are already the latest and greatest chips, but they can be pushed even further thanks to Black Shark's additions and tweaks. These include what they call Liquid Cooling 3.0, which is a vapor cooling system consisting of two different parts, one for both halves of the phone, top and bottom, so that all parts of the device that might get warm are addressed. Of course, that means dissipating heat from the processor, but that also means the charging port stays cool as well, all of the bits around it. That means that this phone can achieve 27 watt fast charging, but you can also charge the phone effectively while you're playing a game. So you don't have to worry about topping up this battery even when you continue your intensive gameplay. The 4000 milliamp hour battery always has a way of getting more juice. As for the external aspects of a gaming experience, loud dual front-facing speakers blast the audio right in your face while the phone actually uses its vibration motors to give a more immersive experience to gameplay via contextual feedback. The cameras are actually an afterthought of sorts in phones that are this niche. We hope that Black Shark's affiliation with Xiaomi has rubbed off well enough on their development and will lead to good pictures and videos in the final product. That said, this is a dual 12 megapixel system, and one of them is made for 2x optical zoom. The front shooter is a 20 megapixel shooter capable of portrait mode effects and AI beauty modes. And all of this is housed in a body with the gamer specifically in mind. The X shape of the back panel allows for the user to rest their fingers naturally on parts of the back, making long gameplay easier on the hands. That X shape, by the way, is how the antennas are aligned. That way, no matter how you might be holding the phone, there's always Wi-Fi or mobile signal unimpeded by your palms and fingers. But what if you want to take things to the next level? Overclocking is a term you might know from the gaming community, and it's only now just getting into gaming smartphones, and the Black Shark 2 is no exception. Black Shark calls it the ludicrous mode. Think of this as hitting the sport mode on a car. It frees up resources that are otherwise taking up the engine, or in this case, the CPU, so that all resulting available power goes to better performance. Because the games that I have played so far on here, including PUBG, uh, have shown me that CPU usage is still at a low, so it's not like I needed to push things further anyway. It should be a setting along with many other gaming settings that are found inside of the shark space, a portion of the operating system that is accessed by hitting a toggle above the power button. When shifted, the phone does a memory dump and clears out any background application so that every little bit can be put toward the game of your choice. If all of these things put together actually do make the phone kind of warm and let's say hot, uh, there is a cooling case that is available that helps with further airflow. But that's just one accessory that is used to make one of the most robust gaming phone packages ever. Other accessories include an HDMI cable to make the phone sort of like a ultra portable console, and then a gamepad that can actually be split apart and connected to the phone via compatible cases to create something like an Android Switch. Now, while all this adds length and weight to the original smartphone package that is plenty powerful on its own, those hardcore gamers that really play their online games for hours on end and need the best experience in both performance and input will probably not mind. They might actually prefer the Black Shark 2 in this highest configuration. But the setup that you're seeing right now, I actually unboxed already over on my channel, youtube.com slash Joshua Vergara. So if you want to get that and some quick reactions, some early reactions to some gaming experience on the Black Shark 2, you can head over to my channel as well. The hardcore mindset is what the Black Shark 2 strives to satisfy. The goal is to be the definitive Android gaming experience. And with all of this thought put into properly prioritizing aspects that really appeal to power gamers, they might have indeed created the most compelling case. 
This is still an Android smartphone, capable of doing everything that you would throw at it. Uh, productivity, media consumption, and of course, gaming. Uh, but once you're done doing all of the regular stuff, just a little click of this toggle right here gets you to an area that transforms this phone into a gaming machine. And it has all of the bits and pieces to transform it physically into one as well. The Black Shark 2 is available now in China and is going to be released in India as well. European markets will be getting their hands on this gaming device uh, fairly soon and we'll see what other markets they might actually penetrate later in 2019. If you were to take the price of the Black Shark 2 in China and just convert it one to one to US dollars, uh, the base model at six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage uh, coming at around $500. And the top tier model can get up to $625. I already got sucked into a few games when trying to get the footage for this and also my video after unboxing this device. Uh, so I'm pretty certain that I'm going to get into some new games simply because the input and the power and the gamepad make it uh, a lot easier to do so. I might actually get into some online games because of this thing. But in any case, I'll give you all of my thoughts here on a final review in Pocket Now, but also over on my channel where I'll probably do some more gaming videos using this. Uh, after all, this can actually do some live streaming as well, but I have to get that uh, um, set up and I also have to get used to doing that but until all of that comes out I'm just gonna go ahead and call it on this one thank you so much for watching uh, subscribe to pocket now if you haven't already and you can head over to my channel as well to see even more content from the black shark 2 uh, with all of that said get into the comment sections let me know what you think about this stacked gaming device uh, but from there uh, we'll just see you in our next video